A New York school is mourning the death of one of its students after a fatal injury during a football game last Friday. 16-year-old Damon Janes, he's a junior on the varsity football team at Brockton High School, took a direct hit to the head during the third quarter of the game. He was knocked unconscious and then he was immediately taken to a nearby hospital. Three days later, at Women and Children's Hospital in Buffalo, he died from his injuries. It was the third death of a high school athlete in New York in as many years. The kids are supporting each other, uh, our staff is supporting the kids, and our kids are supporting the staff, and we do have counselors you know, uh, in, in and around the school. Helmet-to-helmet -helmet hits have been banned at all levels of football, from Pee Wee to the NFL, but they do still happen. In fact, just last week, Tampa Bay safety Deshaun Goldson was fined $30,000 for a similar tackle, hitting New York Jets tight end Jeff Cumberland with his helmet. Jane's death comes just a month after DeAndre Turman, another high school junior, died in Fairburn, Georgia, when he fractured a vertebrae during a scrimmage. Chris, I, I think we're getting better despite those numbers at preventing some of these types of injuries, but still 37 high school students have died since 2000. That gives you a little bit of context, and again, three just over the last three years in New York, Chris. Well, look. You know, I grew up playing the game. You understand this and you kind of learn the culture of the sport as you grow up in it. But a couple of questions here to, to uh, bring the relevance into focus. Any chance that this death was concussion related? Well, it's possible in the sense that, we, and we don't know for sure, but it's possible because of something that I'm particularly concerned about from a neurosurgeon standpoint, something known as second impact syndrome. Mm -hmm. You may be familiar with this, Chris. It means a first concussion. Uh, recognized concussion, but the brain did not heal, and then that same brain takes another hit. And that, that second hit may not have been a problem in isolation, but because it comes so quickly on the heels of the first hit, that can cause a catastrophic, even deadly situation. So uh, concussion related in that regard, Chris. All right, I understand that. Thank you for that, Sanjay. But all right, then we get to the policy related part of this. Football started with no helmets, right? It comes from rugby, no helmets. Then we went to the helmet to keep the head safe. Then, because we had the helmets on, we started using it as a weapon. Now we're trying to get away from it. But the question that is here for parents is, what are you doing when you put your kids into this sport? You know they're going to wind up banging heads. You know they're going to run into each other at high speed. What is the line between safety and sport? Well, you know, as you point out, it's a long discussion, but this is something I'm fascinated by. And let me tell you a couple of quick things. First of all, the helmets have gotten a lot better, quote unquote, but they still do not really protect the brain. What happens when someone takes a hard hit is that the head stops, but the brain keeps moving within the skull. And therein lies the problem. No helmet can prevent that, no matter how good. So that's an important thing. The helmet's not going to do everything. Second of all, again, back to the second impact syndrome. If you recognize that your kid has had a concussion, first of all, be sure that you recognize that and that you got to make sure the brain is completely healed. That is probably the most catastrophic part of all this, that a brain that is not healed is back on that football field. That's when you take an issue of concussions to an issue of death. So th there are many more strategies, I think, again, to make football safer and still have it be football. But from, from a neurosurgeon standpoint, those two are so critically important.